This is an amazing new development. I love what is happening with these vehicle to grid chargers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. The Driven has just reported. I'll put a link to the original article from the Driven.io that Australia's biggest array of bi-directional vehicle to grid charging technology has been unveiled at South Australia's Flinders University as part of a landmark electric vehicle charging hub. Vehicle to grid, what does that mean? Well, it means you can basically charge your car using the grid or you can actually send energy into the grid from your car as well. It's a way you can make money basically operating as a virtual peaker plan. That's the whole point of Tesla's software enabling you to plug into the grid and it can basically dictate when you're sending energy into the grid, when you're removing it from the grid, and you can make money that way. And people have paid off their entire solar and battery systems by simply plugging in, signing up for Tesla's virtual power plant in different places around the world, in particular in California. But also Adelaide does have a virtual power plant grid with Tesla as well. So you can sign up for that too in Adelaide. This is where this project is happening. Now, Adelaide is really going all in because in Adelaide, there was a period last year well the city one it's the biggest city in the world to have run on only renewable energy for i think it was 11 days in a row it's nearly hitting 100 renewables it's about to actually connect to the grid one of the biggest wind farms in australia even though it was at many parts of the year last year over 90 percent running on renewable energy so adelaide is hitting some incredible milestones a joint venture between french energy giant engie and Flinders University will feature 10 vehicle to grid charging stations, along with another 15 AC chargers for use by Flinders staff, in other words, university staff and students, and another four charging DC fast charging bays will be open to the public. The vehicle to grid chargers are a landmark event for Australia, says the Driven, and are designed to play a role in providing backup and key services to the South Australian grid when needed. They will show how EVs can be harnessed as batteries on wheels to support the state's wind and solar dominated grid in periods of peak demand. So in other words, you can literally, while you're studying at college, at university, you can use your car to make you money or you can charge it depending on what the needs of the grid are, depending on what your needs are. You may have a full battery pack and you don't need it. So you can actually plug it in and send energy into the grid or bring it out if you need to. Vehicle to grid charging bays can charge and discharge electricity to the grid, creating a virtual power plant or VPP at the university. It can only be used though by compatible EVs, with this, which at this stage is limited mostly to Nissan Leaf EVs. Now there are other EVs that can do it as well though, but it will eventually include those other EVs as they adopt the technology. Somebody needs to go first. Somebody needs to trial it, says Flinders University Chief Operating Officer Mark Gregory. We need a way to store renewable energy, and this is brilliant as it's a solution that also solves the transportation emissions problem. Now, one of the biggest batteries on wheels, and that could be really, really useful for a vehicle to grid application, is the Ford F-150 Lightning. Massive battery pack, it has vehicle to grid capability, and it works for this scenario really well. Unfortunately, Ford don't sell the F-150 Lightning in Australia. Maybe they will at some point in the future. Now, there will be electric utes, electric pickup trucks. They will become commonplace by 2030. I think they'll make up well over 50% market share, maybe even 100 by 2030. It's very possible. And those kinds of vehicles will be perfect for a vehicle to grid scenario. Virtual power plant. Imagine you could use your solar panel array to charge your car, and then you could use your car to make you money acting as a virtual power plant. South Australia, which already sources more than 70% of its grid demand needs from wind and solar, and that's expected to rise significantly with new installations that have just come on board, expects to host about 170,000 EVs on its roads by 2030, and up to 1 million EVs will be integrated into the electricity system over the next 10 to 20 years. More and more electric vehicles will be hitting our roads in years to come as we travel towards net zero emissions, said the state energy minister. With trials like this investigating the possibilities for broad use of this tech, we can be confident we're on the right track. Now, another EV that I can think of that comes to mind, which we're going to see a lot of over the coming few years, is the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, yes, there won't be many made. There hasn't been many made yet. 
it's not even on sale yet, but Tesla does plan on making 350,000 per year. And yes, there are more than 40,000 pre-orders here in Australia. So I do believe Tesla does plan on making it for right-hand drive markets and it will come here eventually. Well, I hope it will because I ordered one. Now, EV batteries are obviously much bigger than those installed in houses. For example, the average EV battery size is around about 65 kilowatt hours. The average home battery pack might be around about 20 kilowatt hours, meaning your EV battery is probably three to four times bigger depending on the car you have and the battery you have at home. But that's about the average, three to four times the size. Imagine the amount of energy you could send into the grid with a car that size. Remember, yes, you may this may not be useful to you. You may not actually work from home. And if you work from home, though, it's perfect. If you have a big solar array, you work from home, you can charge your battery pack and just be making money constantly. If you have lithium ion phosphate batteries, which have a longer lifespan than nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries, or what's known as lithium ternary batteries in China, then it's the perfect scenario for you. Remember, Tesla Powerwalls and other battery storage energy solutions are now almost exclusively lithium ion phosphate for this reason. Sodium batteries are going to enter this market soon as well. Imagine driving to work, charging in a car park, going home, and then plugging your motor vehicle into the house, offsetting your use at home, said the state minister in Adelaide. Now, great that they're thinking like this. It's amazing when you hear government ministers speaking in this way and really thinking how the future is going to be for you and how they can make it better. I love this. This is literally the advance we're looking for. This is groundbreaking and revolutionary. It's not just about saving on petrol. It is changing the way we think about energy. This guy sounds a little bit like Tony Sieber. Amazing. The two rapid DC chargers at Flinders University ran at 150 kilowatt each, which is a pretty good speed considering the most common Tesla vehicles in Australia have 170 kilowatt charging, are able to service two cars at a time at up to 75 kilowatt each. And they will use Charge Fox's operating platform and will feature time of use pricing brackets. These will vary throughout the trial period to test how pricing can be used to encourage smart charging use during periods of high renewable energy generation or low demand. The trial will generate 12 months of data and provide a range of knowledge shared to inform and encourage further investment in integrated smart charging infrastructure and uptake of EVs, in particular for large fleets. This kind of data then will be shared with other companies, businesses, and they'll be able to see, ah, oh, this works. Why don't we do something like that as well? Now, what you could basically do if you're a charging company and you install something like this is you just simply make a little margin on top. That's what Tesla does with its virtual power plants. The trial will generate 12 months of data and provide a range of knowledge that will help many businesses to install similar setups in many other locations around Australia and possibly worldwide. The trial is part of a 3.2 million government program that will generate over 4.5 million in private investment in EV charging infrastructure and will deliver around 140 smart EV charging bays across a mixture of public and commercial fleet sites around the state. Flinders University Vice Chancellor Colin Sterling said the campus already runs on 100% renewable energy, including 20% generated on campus through its solar arrays. How many universities in the world can say that? They run on 100% renewables, including making 20% of their own energy themselves. I'm going to guess that they'll be able to make 100% of their own energy needs in the future at some point. With inspiring education and research into solar and battery technologies, we're supporting South Australia's transition to a renewable world, underpinned by incredible research growth of 140% in just five years, he said. The head of NG, which is a charging company in Australia and New Zealand, Rick Debussery, said the program signals the huge uplift in demand and increasing awareness of the benefits of transitioning to an electric car fleet. Now for business owners, this is the kind of news they need. And if you're a business owner, why would you be dumb enough to buy a fleet of gasoline internal combustion engine cars? If you're a smart fleet owner, this is what you'll do. The integration of renewable energy, EV charging and demand management systems better matches renewable output to a site's demand, reduces emissions and puts downward pressure on electricity prices, he said. And this is what I keep saying. Electricity prices will come down. Once we have what we need as a country, which is 200% energy supply, in other words, 
we do need to build up more supply. With renewables, you need 200% and then you need battery backup. That's how you get the entire system to work without fossil fuels. When we're in that position, it will mean that more than 95% of the time, we have a massive excess of electricity, renewable generated electricity. That will bring the prices down significantly, making for energy that will have a near marginal cost. What are your thoughts on all this? Let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.